We gotta be, ooh, that's a fence. Sure, okay. I don't think we were meant to go this way. Yeah, we're definitely a little bit too high. Probably want to slow down too. Sort of coming in a bit hot. Hey guys, Lone Hawk here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am starting a brand new series uh, where I'll be playing X Plane 11 with Air Hauler 2. Uh, so I plan on doing this series a little bit different than what I've done in the past. I plan on doing like a gameplay walkthrough and tutorial all combined in one. So I will teach you guys how to use Air Hauler 2 and X Plane 11. Now I'm not an expert in either of them, so I'm going to be learning as well, but I will teach you what I know. So we'll get started uh, with Air Hauler Hauler 2 um, and we're going to make a new company. So once you've got Air Hauler 2 installed you'll be presented with this screen here once you start it up. So we'll just go new company. Okay so first you'll be asked to find the location of your X-Plane 11 AXE file. Now I'm running a Steam version so mine's going to be different to yours. If you're running a DVD version or a download version of X-Plane it'll be in a different place or if you've installed either Steam or your X-Plane somewhere different to me. I'm not going to show you how to do that but you just click browse and then find your file location. Okay, so once you've found your X-Plane A11 AXE, it'll show down here. That's the path to mine, if that helps anyone with uh, a Steam copy. All right, so now we need to enter a company name and pilot name. So I'm going to call my company Loan, if I can spell, Loan Hawk Port. And we'll go a pilot name of just Loan Hawk. And we'll go again the same. All right, and next. Okay, so now we get to pick our difficulty. Um, there's a few things to bear in mind when picking your difficulty. Um, obviously, as you go the harder difficulties, you get less cash, less reputation, and a smaller aircraft. The cash and the aircraft are sort of self-explanatory as the effects that they will have, but the reputation isn't so much. So any of the difficulties below hard with less than 40% reputation, you won't be able to lease aircraft or take out loans and other things like that. So just bear that in mind, that might affect the way you plan on playing with Nomad. I haven't played it yet, but from what I've read, if you select it, you don't get the option to ever set up a base or hire any crew. So you just sort of flying around the country doing your own thing, never really have any sort of base of operation. And lastly, you also have the option to sell your starting aircraft. So if you don't want to use any of the aircraft here and use one of your own, you can sell your aircraft, add those into the game, and then go and buy one of them and fly that. So for me, I'm going to go Korea and I'm going to sell my Cessna straight away as my ideal sort of difficulty would be you start off with low money, maybe virtually nothing, reputation I'm not too fast with, obviously enough to be able to do what I would like which is to hire a plane to start off with and then obviously as you build your cash up buy a second hand plane obviously keep building your cash up and then buy a brand new plane from there I'm not really super keen to start off with a brand new plane or even have a plane at all as it doesn't seem super realistic to me but this is the best option that I can come up with is to go Korea sell the Cessna 172 and then buy a second hand one now one thing to bear in mind if you do do this is the second hand market which I will explain more does change so you might not have an aircraft that you want but I have just created a quick company and I have seen what is available in the secondhand market and I'm happy with a plane that I've seen so we're going to go ahead and do this all right so now we get to pick our base so you're given two ways to do that you can use the map down here where you just scroll out go to wherever you want in the world so say somewhere in Spain and you just highlight over an airport as you can see Madrid and it will bring up all all of its details so that's one way you can find your airport or you can go to this choose airport option uh, you can search multiple different ways so you can either go the name city state or the country I know the code for the airport so I'm going to use that and then it will display the airfield here now I plan on going to Bryant field when you do select your airport 
there is a few things you need to keep in mind that you only see in this screen and that is the opening cost and the maintenance cost now the opening cost is every time you plan on putting a new base at an airfield you will have to pay the opening cost of that airfield and it does also vary based on the size of the airfield so this is a small one so it's only 25,000 but if you're going to LAX I think it's like a hundred thousand or something crazy like that but you do not pay this for your first base so that's free of charge so if you want to get into a big base early you can go LAX and you don't have to pay that. Monthly costs, again, do vary based on the airfield. So mine are only $3,023 for this small airfield, but obviously again, large airports are gonna be much, much more. So you need to earn that amount per month to be able to pay for your base. If you don't, your business will shut down. So we will select this airport and I'll show you the other stats related to the airfields. So you have the name there and the code for it. You have its elevation, you have its latitude and longitude. Okay, they're not there for some reason. Um, that might be a bug, I'm not sure. And the next two are really important. Uh, you have your landing fees and your fuel cost. So your landing fees are broken up into three levels. So small, medium, and large aircraft. Um, as we're in a Cessna, it's a small aircraft. So we're only gonna have to pay $73 every time we take off. Uh, somewhere like LAX, I think it is $6,000 for small aircraft. So when you're doing a job for $5,000, you ain't making any money. So just bear that in mind. Fuel price, again, does change i know it changes from sort of airport size so from bryant field to say lax i'm not sure if it changes country to country you might find that it's a bit more expensive say in europe compared to the us or vice versa uh you're also given some other information like the runway lengths and the lights that are available on those runways now that we've picked our airfield we will go next and you come to the cargo creation option. With this, you don't have to be worried. If you set it now and you mess it up, you can change this at any time, and it is only for cargo jobs. So the first thing is job volume. So that's basically just how many job offers will be available to you at any one time. So we'll leave that somewhere in the middle. That seems pretty good. Distance, how far away they're each set. Now, I don't want to fly super far, so we'll go about or the way I reckon for that. Size is basically the size of the job, so how much cargo you will be transporting. As we're in a Cessna, we don't wanna to go too crazy because we sort of wanna be able to fit it all within one job. So we might go just under half. If you do take a job that is more cargo than you can handle, you can do multiple trips, but you only get the one payment for it. So just bear that in mind. Internal jobs are basically jobs that are from your base to another one of your bases. So as you only start off with one base, that doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna leave that there. Airport size is basically the size of the airport that you're gonna to fly to. So since we're in a Cessna, we'll sort of keep it on the smaller side. If you did go the easy option and you have a 737, you probably wanna to go to your larger airports. So we will go next and congratulations. We have completed our company setup. Okay, so because we don't have an aircraft, it's just given us a warning that we don't have one, that we have to go purchase or lease one. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is buy the secondhand aircraft that I want before we miss out. We'll go up here to Marketplace and Private Sales, and this takes you to the secondhand aircraft. Now, this is the aircraft that I wanna buy here. It is, again, the Cessna 172. It is located up here in Montana, and our airfield is down here in California, right around there somewhere. So we will actually have to fly back, so my plan is to hopefully get some jobs that will get us back to our base, and uh, we'll see how that goes. That will also let us sort of maybe pick out a second base of operation sort of around here, but we'll see how we go. So I'll explain the secondhand aircraft market since we're here. So with the secondhand market, the aircraft that are listed on here will change. They're either being sold by other players or they are auto generated and change all the time. So what you see now is not what will be there in a day or even in a couple of hours. Uh, so just bear that in mind when looking at aircraft is they won't always be the same. And just a quick breakdown of the details that you get so you get the aircraft name a bit more of its details the condition so the one that we're getting is at 69 percent the price for it which is 165,000 and I'm pretty sure we sold our Cessna for 239,000 so that's about 80,000 off airport that it is located it's cargo capacity the maximum seats that are available I'm not sure what MTOW is so if anyone knows please let me know in the contact uh, the type of aircraft that it is so it's a cargo aircraft and the seller name so let's go ahead and buy it
Yes, I am definitely sure. Okay, now you have an option to buy this aircraft for the company or as a private purchase. Now, the only difference I can tell with this is if it is a company aircraft, your AI crew members can fly and do jobs for you. If it's a private aircraft, they can't. And I believe all the funds that come that are linked to either company or private come out of their respective accounts. So down the bottom here, you'll see you have your company cash and personal cash. I could be wrong. So if anyone does know anything different, please leave a comment below. So we want this as a company purchase. Now, one thing that I did totally forget about is the option to have the aircraft delivered. So as I'm gonna to try to play this as realistic as possible, I'm probably going to assume that being a secondhand aircraft of this size anyway, you're probably gonna go pick it up yourself. Um, unless you're incredibly lucky and the person's happy to fly it halfway across the country for you and it will also probably make a bit better gameplay of us sort of getting to explore very different airports so we are going to go no we will collect okay so we have now purchased our first aircraft so we'll click ok and we have got an award for that so I will go back to the office and explain all the different menu options available. Uh, so when you're in your office, which is this first screen that you'll be presented with, you can click on a lot of these icons. And as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, they are popping up with different menu options. All of those menu options are up here in the top left though. So we'll start off with cargo jobs and passenger routes, which are these five icons here. Um, so cargo is this side and passenger is this side. Pretty self-explanatory. If you want to do cargo jobs, you go here passenger jobs you go here as i do play and we do these options i, I will explain them in detail uh your missions i haven't played any of these and i haven't looked a lot into these uh, but you have humanitarian missions so i'm not too sure what that might be maybe delivering blood somewhere or something like that uh then you have the air hauler 2 radar so we'll click on that and that will bring up a map of the world and you can see everyone else currently flying around on air hauler 2 which is pretty cool next we have company information so here you have your basis tab where you can see all the information about your base you have your fleet tab where you can see all the information about your fleet like their plane obviously our plane isn't brand new uh, so we have its condition we can repair it you have the different hours until you have to get checked on it which i reckon is pretty cool obviously all these do cost money so keep that in mind you can't just do them whenever you feel like uh, then you have your pilot operations so as you get pilots you'll be able to send them out on tasks for you then you just have general information and this is where we can change the company logo so i am going to do that so we'll click on company logo and then we'll go load image and once you've found your image you just load it in uh, you can also set your company identifier so we will go lht for lone hawk transport and we will save that next you have your finance so you can just see how your company's doing how much cash you have and where all your expenses are and where all your money is going uh, then you have office which takes you back there and your personal info i don't know if you can change your name or anything like that so keep that in mind that you may not be able to so make sure you're happy with all of that and this is also where we do our type rating now with air hauler 2 every aircraft that you fly you have to have been qualified on it and do a type rating so since we have no type ratings we will need to do one on the cessna so that will be the second part of this video and i'll walk you through that when we get there uh, next option is virtual airlines now i don't plan on flying with a virtual airline and i don't know too much about them so i'm going to sort of skip over this uh, but if anyone does know much about virtual airlines please add a comment below so that you can hopefully help someone out then you have facilities and construction now this is where you can build a factory or warehouses to either create or store goods that you can then transport to destinations that are in demand for those items and sell them at a premium. Uh, you can also build aircraft using the construction option. Next you have marketplace which we did explain the second hand market uh, and you also have the new aircraft and crew market. You can also take out loans from here as well. Then we have management. And this is where you can add custom airports and additional aircraft to the game. And lastly, you have options for air hauler too. Pretty self-explanatory, not gonna go over that one. 
Okay, so now that we've gone over all the different menus within Air Hauler, even though they were sort of brief, uh, just bear in mind I will explain each one in more detail as I actually use them. So sort of my idea for this sort of realistic playthrough is that, you know, we're sort of a, a new pilot starting out. Um, we've taken out a loan for about 250000 Use that to start up our company at Brightfield Airport. Um, we've searched online, found a plane that we want up in Montana. So we purchased that, now we're sort of gonna drive a fly out there, go for a test flight or the type rating flight, make sure we're qualified on that plane. Then we're gonna slowly bring it back to our base of operation. Um, and along the way, try to pick up some cargo jobs to sort of pay for the trip back and help us make a bit of money. Okay, so let's get started. Now, the first thing we wanna do is just check where exactly our plane is so that we can uh, head out there. So to do that, you go to company information and then to fleet. And within fleet, you can see all the different aircraft that you might have. Um, and they have a little bit of details listed about them. So as we can see, the location of our brand new Cessna is at KCTB, which is right here in Northern Montana. And as we zoom in, we can actually see that that is Cut Bank Airport. Now the plane's obviously not in the best condition, which is good. We sort of wanted a secondhand plane for a little bit cheaper. We do have quite a bit of money left over that we can put into the plane or into the company through facilities and storage and things like that, or a bit of both. So now that we know where our plane is, we need to go on our test flight and type rating. So to do that, you need to go over to personal info. And then over here on the right is the list of type ratings that you have or don't have. So we need to go add new type rating and it is for the Cessna 172 and it is a cost of $329. Right, so we will pay that and do our test flight now. Now, whenever you go to do any flight, whether that be a type rating, cargo or passenger flight, you'll be presented with this menu and it will be a breakdown of different aspects of the flight. So you have your aircraft, the airfield that you're at, you'll have a passenger section. If you're doing a passenger flight, you'll have a cargo section for all your cargo stuff and then fuel for the aircraft. Now, as this is a type rating flight, you can just ignore all of this. Um, if you wanted to, you could play with the fuel, but the passengers and the cargo, we're just going to leave alone because we're on a type rating flight. I will explain all of this when we go on our next flight, but until then, I'm just going to skip over it as it's not needed. So we'll click OK, and then that'll bring me up to ready to launch X-Plane. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can leave it in non-network mode, which will allow the game to launch X-Plane and enter all of the required information such as your airport location, uh, the weight of the plane, fuel, cargo, and all of that sort of stuff. Or you can go into network mode and you have to manually enter that every time. Um, I don't want to do that, so we're going to leave it in non-network mode. So we just click launch X-Plane and it will start X-Plane up automatically. Now, while X-Plane is in the background, I'm going to bring up the other screen that is important, which is this screen here, which does pop up in the background after X-Plane actually loads, so you sort of don't notice it. It is basically the link between X-Plane and Air Hall to track all your flights. Uh, it does have like a traffic light system. So obviously it's at the moment, it's waiting for X-Plane to fully load up and get into the flight. Once it goes green, it's tracking your flight and you're good to go. Red is there some sort of issue. So if you've paused X-Plane or it can't connect or something like that. And then when you have finished your flight and you've closed X-Plane, you come down here to finish flight monitoring. And that will also at the end, keep track of where you are. So for your next flight, you can start in the exact same position. Push that off to the side so I can keep an eye on it while we're flying and we will go back into X-Plane. All right, so when you let the game launch automatically, you just click on resume last flight and everything will be loaded up for you. All right, so now we are in X-Plane. So I'm just going to fix up a few of my controls and we will start the aircraft. So the first thing we want to do is hide the yoke so that we can see what we're doing. And we want to turn the battery on. I have a set of Satec panels, so you might hear some clicking. That's just me pushing the switches. So we will turn the turn the battery on. If it wants to play ball. Oh, wrong one, my bad. Battery on. Uh, all the landing lights are on, but if I click that, that should turn them all off because we don't need them. And we just want the beacon for now. And we will turn the key and set it to start. 
And one thing I did forget is to actually put the mixture all the way to rich, or otherwise you won't start the aircraft. So we'll try it again. There we go, she started. We'll leave it on both. And we can turn on the alternator, start getting some power. Turn on our avionics, which brings up our screens, and we'll get the rest of our lights on. All right, so now we're ready to start. Okay, so we got no flaps. Just double check, it looks like it's all the way up. And we will start applying some power. And I almost forgot the puck brake, and we're away. So now we're just being told by Air Hauler 2 to taxi and take off as it's already begun the type rating flight. But we'll just go to full power. Not much at this airfield, it's pretty barren. And we're slowly getting up to speed. We want to get to about 70 and we will start to rotate. We don't have full fuel, which is nice. And we want to sort of climb at about 75 knots. Now I have really only done the tutorial flights and one or two extra flights since then. Um, a lot of what I am going off as is the general sort of stuff that I know from playing like DCS and um, a few tutorials I've seen online. So it wants us to climb to 6,000 indicated. So we'll just keep going up at full power and hopefully get there soon. Um, so yeah, don't judge me too hard on my flying ability. Um, obviously, as you watch a few of these episodes, you'll see I definitely will learn a lot more and will get a lot better, hopefully. But uh, yeah, it should be good. Uh, so I'll sort of elaborate on my plan um, in terms of how I want to structure these. I'm sort of going to have a little bit of a backstory, like I mentioned, with sort of the, uh, the loan and stuff, getting all of that. Um, and then I do want to make these sort of the gameplay so you can just come watch me fly around and sort of talk a bit of shit in the airplane as we uh, slowly build our business. Plus I'm also going to do the tutorial element. Um, obviously as you would have seen so far, the whole first part of this episode has been a tutorial. That's sort of only going to be for that epi this episode. Um, as obviously the tutorial side won't need to be as in depth each time. Um, because I sort of got the main chunk of it out of the way, but um, yeah, I will sort of be explaining stuff as this is our tight rating flight. I will sort of explain what's going on with the aircraft. Um, as you can see here, this is basically our altitude. Sorry, our altitude. This is basically our altitude gauge. Uh, as you can see, the little needle measures in thousands of feet and the larger needle measures in hundreds of feet. So we're at 5,500 feet pretty much now. And then that'll just slowly go up as we get up to 6,000 feet, which is what Air Hauler wants. And then this is our speed. So at the moment we're doing right around 75-ish knots. Um, then you also have your vertical speed indicator, which is feet per minute, uh, and that's measured by 100. So that's 500, and that is 1,000, and 1,500. Uh, then you have our, I always forget what this gauge is called. I'm sure it'll come to me after I finish saying it, but it just basically shows your level to the horizon. So at the moment, we're sort of in the blue, so we are gaining. So now it wants us to hold 6,000 feet for the tire rating flight and turn to a heading of 225. So you can use the compass here to do it or you can use the GPS compass here which is a little bit easier to get it sort of pinpoint. Um, I'm going to use the GPS as I'm not sure how, how accurate it wants us to actually be and I don't want to be sort of flying a few degrees off and it sort of messes it up. Um, but normally this compass is more than sufficient and it is directly in your line of view so it can make it easy and I sort of overshot that then. We are starting to get a little high so I'm going to come down and level out. We're definitely speeding up. I do need to trim the plane out a little bit. If you sort of see me looking off to the left or the right that's because I am looking at my panels and trying not to knock my microphone, which I think you will have all just heard. Just trying to get the aircraft to descend a little. So that, whoop, 
so that we don't get too high. I don't know how close it wants you to follow those parameters. Um, so I'm going to try to do my best to sort of stay very close to them. As we are up to height, we can back the mixture off just a little and maybe even back the power off as well. We don't want to be going too fast or get too far away. Um, the other thing is we are paying for this fuel, so we don't really sort of want to waste it, um, especially when we're not making any money from this flight. So we're pretty much dead on heading. I'm just going to drop a little bit and see if that triggers the uh, next message from Air Hauler 2. Uh, while I mentioned fuel, this is your fuel gauge here. It's split into left and right. As you can see, we're about at the three quarter mark with the full band up there. And we have just been given more, instru more instructions to turn left heading 138 and level out at 5,500. Uh, so with the type rating flight, you sort of just given, you know, maintain this level, maintain that level, turn left, turn right, those sort of things. And after about three or four of them, you're directed back to the airfield. Um, I do apologize that this section has been a little all over the place um, But yeah, I'm just sort of trying to get a quite a bit of information out about the aircraft in general as I can in one small bit uh, As I do use the different gauges for different things I will sort of explain them um, and it is a bit easier when I'm not trying to follow instructions All right now we want to keep going down and turn 029 as you can see it is sort of a bit hard to sort of keep a conversation going as you're trying to follow all these different directions that you've been given but uh, hopefully I'm not doing too bad they're just gonna slowly turn left and slowly descend pretty sure there'll be one more after this and then it'll probably tell us to come back and land uh, you are also scored on your landing with air hauler 2 which is good um, sort of makes you want to pay a bit more attention to when you're landing and the other thing is if you do land too hard and you damage the plane you've got to repair it but that should be good um, let us know in the comments below too what you think I should do with the rest of that money in terms of facilities and, and stuff like that what I should upgrade whether I should buy storage for fuel um, or just save it save it up for an aircraft things like that let me know right, so we're coming up on 5,000 and cool I have totally lost track of the airfield oh no there it is good that would have been bad that would have been really bad um, I have done a quick test flight out of Bryant field to sort of um, see what that was like and it is very distinct where it is it's right next to a lake um, so that shouldn't be uh, too hard to find it um, obviously we can use our GPS it would be that uh, yeah, the pink little dot there. Yep, KCTB. So we would have been right if we had to find it. And now it wants us to land at our airfield. So we will head back to it. Uh, another gauge too here is the bank indicator. So as you can see, we have our left wing down and our right wing up. And it just sort of obviously lets you know what... Um, bank the aircraft is in obviously if there's clouds and stuff you might not be able to see it does also show on the artificial horizon here um, as your bank but those are just two different gauges uh, down the bottom here you have like the spirit level looking bit which is a uh, slide indicator I almost forgot the name there and that just basically shows you if your aircraft is sort of yawing out so if I use the left rudder you can see we're sort of still staying level but it's kicked out to the left there. That's just to let us know that we are sort of sliding left. All right, so we will start to slow down. Don't want to back off the power too much because once we start to put the flaps out, we're going to need the speed. Um, so hopefully we can find a few um, contracts from out of this airport that would definitely help or otherwise we're sort of going to be flying back making no money at all um, at the moment I do plan on doing all of those flights in full to let you guys see everything and I'll sort of just waffle on a bit um, but if you would prefer that I sort of skip the chunks of it out let us know I don't plan on the flights being too long I don't want to do sort of super long flights it just sort of doesn't work with uh, 
my scheduling and stuff like that so they will sort of be shorter flights anyway so I want to also keep the videos to about the 20 25 minute mark at the longest but uh, yeah definitely let us know if you do have any ideas or things you'd like to see in here or want anything explained uh, further that I have sort of touched on briefly let us know in the comments below and I will add that alright so we are coming up doesn't look like there's any other airfields here um, it looks like it's just the one can't quite make out if there is one maybe going horizontal just sort of by the the different patching of the grass there it looks like there is maybe something going horizontal across this airfield but yeah we're definitely out in the middle of nowhere here <laughs> I'm a little high but we can sort of descend a bit quicker we can fix that up so might be a tad bit worried about getting jobs hopefully not hopefully we can find work pretty easy um, I do want to sort of build the company up to sort of an empire you know hopefully have a few AI pilots flying sort of commercial jetliners around obviously that's a long long way away but we will uh, see how we go yeah we're definitely a little bit too high uh, we'll fix it up I just have to try to get a nice smooth landing otherwise I will be doing this again Back off on the power. Try to hold the center line. Ooh, it was smooth. Let's just ignore the uh, fact that I went really far sideways there. Definitely off the center line. All right. Um, sure. What we might do is just bring the aircraft to a stop. And I'm going to go into an external view so I can see where on earth we are and how we get back. Oh, I didn't see any planes. Oh, yeah, it looks like there's one up there. Yeah, we'll just quickly go up there. But uh, that was the type rating. Um, so now we are qualified to sort of uh, fly the Cessna, if you want to sort of put it that way. But uh, I'm looking at this as more of like, you know, you've come out, you've seen the plane, gone for a bit of a test flight. We were happy with it. She flies all right, um, and yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna look at buying it, which I know we already have, but try to keep it as realistic as possible. Yeah. Um, one thing you can also do, which I didn't do for this, is you can actually change like the settings and the weather. I don't have any of the add-ons for that, so I will just be setting it to real-world weather. So whatever the, the weather condition is, pretty much most of our flights are going to be out of California. Um, that's what will be set to the game. I did, yeah, like I said, totally forget about this. Uh, forget about that in this uh, video, but uh, next time I will do it. I will quickly show you how to do that in a second once we stop though. Um, so we will just sort of pull up to that aircraft over there, park in the hangar. Get our flaps up. Probably want to slow down too, sort of coming in a bit hot. Oh, that's a fence. Sure, okay. I don't think we were meant to go this way. But we, we can definitely squeeze in there next to that. Eh. Please don't hit it. It looks much more expensive than ours. And we will just stop here. Alright, now because we want to start the aircraft up the same way, we will turn off our avionics, which I'm looking for the button. That's it. We'll turn off our alternator. We'll turn off all our lights except for no, except for our beacon. Uh, which is that one, that one, that one, and that one. Then we can turn off the other avionics one. Turn the engine off. Turn the battery off. That's it. Now that we've stopped the plane completely. Oh, park brake definitely helps. Um, you sort of given this lets you know with your type rating flight that you've. Um, done all the required steps um, yeah and that we passed with no issues so we will click OK 
and that's pretty much it now you can exit out of x-plane but like i said i'll quickly show you the weather so you come up here you go to the aircraft and it brings you up to this as long as you don't change where you are and anything like that you're fine you might be able to play with the time um i don't know i am going to sort of show you in the next video how to set that to make sure you're flying during the day and not in the middle of the night um and then we'll go customize and because I already did a test flight to make sure this was working, it's updated 17 minutes ago for a real world, for real world weather. But you can just go manually configure and then go back to real world weather to get it to reload. We'll just see if it does decide to change. Yep, so a little bit up at 30,000 feet has changed. That could be just something that's happened in the last 15 minutes. But yeah, that's it. And then you just click done and go apply changes. And yeah, the weather is exactly the same. All right, so now we will exit out of X-Plane. Quit. And then we can bring this screen back here. Now it does say that we have disconnected, but we finished the flight. So we'll go finish flight monitoring. And it gives you basically a rundown of everything that sort of happened, what you're up to, our flight time, and most importantly, our landing performance. So we got a smooth which I'm pretty happy with that. It was a pretty good touchdown, other than the fact that we sort of went off the center line. So we'll just go OK. And that's it. If we go to our personal information, you can see that we are now qualified on the Cessna. All right, so I will go ahead and end the video here. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to stay up to date with all my videos, please hit the bell notification. And until next time, thanks for watching.